Pork chops is one of my go-to favorite meals. We apple brine smoked these pork chops and we did a apple chutney to go along with it. Do you guys want to see this? Here we go. If you haven't watched one of my previous videos, you know my love for pork chops. We've done pork chops several different ways. Today is no different. It's just another way. Fall is here. It's not only because the weather is my favorite time of year, but because of the flavors. Apple cider, you can find them. Tons of grocery stores right now. Check them out. This actually came from Pennsylvania <clears throat> when we did, was it on the Flat Top King? Oh, so my other channel, the Flat Top King, we did a um, bacon onion jam. Bacon onion jam, and we used maple syrup from a farm in Pennsylvania, and I absolutely loved it. Well, my mother in law got me this stuff from the same area, uh, so we'll give it a try. One of my favorites apples and pork. So we got some thick cut pork chops here. Simply enough, I've just had these in the freezer because I buy them in bulk and then butcher them myself. Nice, thick, juicy, tons of fat in there, pork chops. With each layer, I'm just gonna lightly salt, just like you would a seasoning, and then just add a little solder, and we're just gonna repeat the process. I think we got three massive pork chops. The solder's got the sweetness. It's got all those fall notes. The salt's gonna help pull and push that moisture through the pork chops for us. And since they're so small, it's not like we have to brine it overnight. We're only looking about a four hour brine. So just get enough liquid to cover it. So let's set it in the refrigerator for about four hours and we're gonna start the smoker. Dang good on my time today. We're talking about four hours later. So your pork chops should look something like that, okay? If you notice this little tray that I've got, it's got little ridges on there. It allows that juice to funnel underneath so it's not just pulling in its own juices. This is the actual tray from uh, the Weber griddle. Works fantastic with other things. And quickly enough, we'll make a homemade, what I call pork chop seasoning. We do it quite often. This recipe will be on pelletsandpits.com. You got your chili powder, garlic powder, salt, pepper, sugar, some onion powder. Give that a mix. Simply enough, you know the drill, sides, tops, bottoms. I didn't necessarily want to overpower this with seasonings because oh, there's so much brine flavor in there. So I thought this was a great all-purpose seasoning. Anybody can use it. You don't have to use my seasonings. Although shake that is great on pork chops too. <laughs> <laughs> We're using our small chef temp spike today. I'm just gonna use this as a guide and there's one of the pork chops. That way we have an idea of what we're looking at over a period of time. Just insert that right there. And that's gonna give us a good go. Weber Searwood XL, roughly about 225 degrees. You guys know I'm rocking those smoke on pellets. I'm looking for a low and slow smoke. So we're gonna smoke these all the way through. Just come back and hit those tops where they got into a little bit of that moisture, took some of the seasonings away. And there we go. We're gonna rock these to about 142 degrees. Pork chops are roughly about 125 degrees. Perfect time to make an apple chutney. I love it. It's very um, like a broken applesauce, a little bit more chunky, and you can do it a thousand different ways. This is my version. Really quick on the list of ingredients, we're mirroring those flavors. That's a great thing about a good garnish. I've always felt like a really good garnish is incorporating all the flavor, or most of the flavors that you have in the dish. We got the apple cider. We have a little bit of that uh, maple syrup, orange liqueur, some little cinnamon, butter. These apples were actually picked in Pennsylvania as well, and a little red pepper. We're just working on a rough dice. Not a big deal, you can leave it as chunky or as fine as you like it. About a tablespoon of butter, onions go in. Same thing with the apples. Once everything's in the pot, you're just looking to cook these down, get those apples tender. Doesn't take long. This is the hot stuff, just a little. Just eyeballing everything today, a little cinnamon. About a tablespoon of brown sugar. If you don't have the maple syrup, you might want to up your brown sugar. I like the balance, two different flavors. A few tablespoons of the syrup. 
little orange liqueur. And about a quarter cup of the apple cider. Just let that cook down, let those apples get soft. Oh yeah. The orange, Ooh, the red yeah. pepper, it's on the back of the throat. Golly, we might need a recipe for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. For me, this is exactly how I like it. If you get to this stage, you know, like you don't feel like your apples are cooked enough, you can always add a little bit more solder and keep cooking them down. Like I said, I like mine chunky. So simply I'm gonna turn off the heat as it's cool as that sauce will thicken. And this is gonna pair perfectly with the apple cider smoked pork chops. We're rocking about 10 more degrees, some are five, some are 10. I just got some apple cider vinegar, just lightly coat. Gotta be honest, pretty excited about it. It looks fantastic. Thick cut pork chops, rough cut apple style chutney. The flavors are just gonna pop together, I feel like. Low and slow the whole time. You can grill these pork chops after you brine them. I'm a huge grilled chop fan. Grilled chop, grilled pork chop fan. But overall, I don't think the pork chop pick, picked up as much flavor as what I was anticipating. The apple chutney is what sets over the top. 100, 10 out of 10, 100% of the time, guaranteed. That's damn good. The pork chop smoke is good. The pork chop. The pork chop smoke is good. The pork chop smoke is perfectly cooked, so you get all the juice and all the flavor. I was worried about when I brined how much salt to add, and I really thought I didn't want to brine it for too long because since they are pork chops and not like a large turkey, I didn't want to extend that brine. Looking back, I mean, Let's I see. think it could definitely take longer in the brine. Mm. That's a dang good pork chop, though. <laughs> try it with apple. Mm -hmm. A little bit of that sauce. And then I want to try a piece like without the actual sauce from the apples. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Mm. That sounds like a love. Mm-hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Getting lucky. That apple sauce is 100. <laughs> that apple's super good. Let me try a piece, like, without any of the juice from the apple. I get a hint of the apple cider. When we have our turkeys browned, we think there is a significant difference in flavor and texture and moistness when it comes to a browned turkey versus a non-browned turkey. I just don't get the flavor. I think the tenderness is there. I think it did probably absorb some of the liquid. Um, I would say just do it longer, you know, or, or have a stronger brine to begin with. That's why we cook these. I know for a fact, if you combine everything together, you never know the difference. It is fantastic. Yeah, the apples are amazing. Yeah, the apples what set it apart. And the pork chop is perfectly cooked. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. Try those apples. Mm. Go ahead. You could just eat these apples by themselves. This would be like a good, like, just cinnamon apple mm -hmm. recipe. Mmm. Mmm.